Hello, how are you? We are not yet completely interrupting the normal programming. What we are doing is making an international call to somebody somewhere out there in this world so we can find out a little bit about what lockdown means for the rest of the world. My name is Valentine and you're watching Y254. Hi there, Pastor Dave. Hi. <laughs> We we have a we, uh, we have funny a, thing uh, that funny when thing you guys that smile, you your eyes disappear. <laughs> it's really cute. Need <laughs> glasses to your eyes. That's funny. <laughs> so where are you, and what time is it? Uh, right now it's uh, one thirty p.m. and mm -hmm. uh, I'm saying hi to you from mm -hmm. London, UK. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is a beautiful springtime mm -hmm. right now. It's really sunny outside, uh, but we can't go out. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the irony. Okay, so what we have wow, in the Kenya, irony. Okay, rather, so okay, yes, in Kenya, but I think mostly in the the counties that have been affected by the pandemic, we have a seven p.m. curfew. So we're supposed to be at home by seven p.m. and then we get to leave the next day from five a.m. So what's going on with you guys? What does do you guys have lockdown? Do you have, what does lockdown mean? What's your curfew like? What's actually happening? So, well, London's a huge city with mm -hmm. like millions of people living in just this mm -hmm. city. So it is on lockdown. And what it essentially means is that everybody is to stay home. So mm -hmm. um, nobody is allowed to go out except if mm -hmm. you are working in the healthcare or mm -hmm. if your job is deemed as an essential mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. uh, and this could be different different jobs, you know, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes people in the FMB, that's the essential service. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people are working, uh, you know, in the mm -hmm. hospital or helping with transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's essential service. But if you're not essential service, everyone mm -hmm. else, you are advised to stay home. And uh, we are not allowed to go out except for two things. Mm -hmm. Um, to buy essentials, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. is something that we are only encouraged to do when we desperately need it. So we are to reduce it. If we can go out once a week, that would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, you are only allowed to go out mm -hmm. for 30 minute exercises, and that's it. Wow. And so, yeah, so it's, I think you guys wow. have it much better. Yes. Yeah. So over here is yes. everyone is to work from home work from home otherwise just stay at home mm -hmm. uh, so that we cut the spread mm -hmm. of the virus mm -hmm. and uh, only go out to the shops if you need mm -hmm. it and when you do go to the shops everyone is expected to have two meters distance from each mm -hmm. other so you're not allowed to crowd mm -hmm. uh, there is a queue to go into the shops to buy your essentials and even the queue is two meters apart wow. so sometimes the queue could be very long Mm -hmm. uh, and wow. that's why people only advise you to do it mm -hmm. once a week so mm -hmm. that we don't overcrowd the shops. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, and, and apart mm -hmm. from that, it's just 30 minutes of exercise every day. And uh, the police are patrolling. And so if they notice you staying out for far too long, they will come and they'll have a word. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll politely tell you to maybe go mm -hmm. home or they ask you. And usually that's it. I think nobody has had to be arrested or fined. Um, so just a gentle telling off from the police. I think I kind of like your police. Hmm. <laughs> how is it? Um, how is it working out with your family? Yeah, me neither. I, I can't even take it further than that. But I really like your police over there. So, what? How is your family dealing with it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, my family is small. It's just me and uh, my wife. Uh, mm -hmm. No children, so mm -hmm. um, that helps. Uh, my wife is a lawyer. She mm -hmm. continues to work from home. Uh, wow. And uh, I continue to work from home. Uh, wow. I work as a pastor, so all of mm -hmm. our uh, worship service now is broadcast online. And mm -hmm. what we do is that we pre-record mm -hmm. our sermons, we pre-record our worship, uh, and we get it all edited and ready to be, you know, uploaded on Saturday so that people can watch it on Sunday over here. And my wife continues to work. So. If for our family, it's easy to adjust. Uh, it, it's tougher, I imagine, with some of my friends with children. Mm -hmm. And uh, because school is out, so mm -hmm. it's basically having a child with you 24 <laughs> 7. And uh, while that is a blessing, I'm sure <laughs> sometimes parents also need a break. Yeah, they are. You know, lots of, you know, usually they have 
the open outdoors to just run off the energy, but now they are literally bouncing off the door. And the thing in the UK is that uh, mm-hmm. the houses are small, uh, mm-hmm. flats are small, so sometimes space constrained. Oh. Um, but yeah, but, oh. but as for me and my house. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I have just one last question, maybe. How, how would you advise maybe the people who are being anxious? Because I think it's quarantine or mandatory staying at home because kind of robbed people of their peace. So maybe the plans that they had or uh, things that they had planned to do, maybe in the next three, five, six months, a year, they can't do now. So we've seen the uprise of a lot of negative things. So we have things like cyberbullying and because people have time and, and they're on their phones, you know, basically nothing else to do uh, except wash, wash, ha- wash your hands and sanitize things. But maybe how, how would you help us alleviate some of that anxiety well some practical advice would be to limit the amount of news I think uh, like you said with a lot of free time sometimes we our minds wander Mm -hmm. and uh, with Mm -hmm. just you know the the internet uh, at the tip of our hands you know we sometimes fixate it and uh, we get overwhelmed with bad news we all get overwhelmed with conspiracy theories and and all these kind of things and so i think for your own mental emotional health i think it's, it's best to maybe limit your news intake uh maybe limit it to you know that one website that you can trust so that you know that they're just reporting the facts um so i think that helps to reduce your anxiety otherwise you're just feeding it with a lot of bad news uh, as for the whole quarantine, yeah, it's not easy, uh, but I would advise people to make the most out of it. Maybe uh, pick up a hobby, pick up a skill. Uh, maybe parents who are usually busy, this is a good time to spend some time with your children. Uh, and uh, hopefully one day we get to look back and, and be thankful for, wow, we, I know children will one day get to look back and go like, you know what, uh, I got to really know my dad. I got to really know my mom. Mm -hmm. uh in that quarantine season so i think Mm -hmm. uh there can be a lot of positives that come out from it uh but apart from that i think we all know quarantine is something that's happening around the world uh so it's not a punishment for any one particular country or city nobody is trying to lock you down i think this is just everybody around the world as the world gets smaller uh, to doing the socially responsible thing, staying at home to try to cut off the spread of the virus, and uh, maybe practicing some good uh, hygiene. You know, wash your hands. Um, you know, in in our household, we instead of singing happy birthday twice, what we do is we recite the Lord's prayer uh, because it takes about the time of two happy birthdays, and yet it gives you more peace. You know, simple things like you know, deliver us from evil. You know, do not lead us into temptation and, 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 and things like that. You know, it becomes whether you have faith or without faith. I think focusing on some of these things uh, can have, you know, meditating on, on the good things, uh, whether it's faith, whether it's prayer, I think can help calm a lot of our nerves and give us a lot of peace uh, as we allow those in charge to do the best that they can uh, to get everyone out of this. All right, my last question, absolute last question. So we've had a couple of cases, and this is not rampant. This is very, very random, and and they're very, 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 if not minute cases, yeah? So we have a couple of people who don't really believe that COVID-19 is in existence, but they're just believing it's some type of conspiracy theory. I don't know, somebody made up somewhere. So following directives is not really primary for them, simply because they don't feel there's a threat is real. So what would you like to communicate? Because as it stands, as of yesterday, we have 303 active cases. We've had 83 recoveries and 14 fatalities versus the rest of the world that has thousands, thousands in deaths, thousands in in recoveries and thousands in active cases. So maybe lastly, what would you like to tell my fellow fellow Kenyans? Fellow Kenyans. (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, I would say that, you know, this, this, you know, anything like a virus or bacteria, you know, it's not something we can see with our physical eyes. And because of that, I think human nature, we tend to find it hard to trust things that we, we can't touch, we can't see. Um, and, uh, so it's easy, easy to give in to some of these conspiracy theories. 
Um, I think it's also our human nature of wanting to be in control. Because if I, I can convince myself that this is not real, then I don't need to be afraid. Uh, so I think the issue is really about, you know, um, it's really about the unseen. And uh, just because we can't see it, kind of like faith, just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not real, doesn't mean the effects of it is not real. Uh, and uh, my encouragement is for, uh, you know, people to, to, you know, even if you are maybe a little bit more fearless, let's put it that way. It's not nice to call people conspiracy theorists, but maybe you're a little bit more fearless. You don't think that this virus is a big deal. You think you're strong enough. Well, good on you. Maybe you do have better genes. Uh, but unfortunately, not everyone around the world has that. And so I would say that for those that are stronger, uh, that you would limit uh, yourself so that we can, you know, maybe maybe think of other people. And uh, even if you're not doing it for your sake, maybe just uh, socially distance so that for the sake of other people, uh, so that everyone can can come out of this health to Okay. Pastor Dave, okay. I've, I've been very rude. I'm so sorry. I haven't even asked. I haven't checked up on you. I know, yes, you're in London, but I know where you're from. So how is your family? How is your extended family? How is everyone doing? Is everyone accounted for? Is everyone safe? Is everyone faring on okay? How are you communicating with them? Yeah, well, uh, I'm originally from Malaysia. Right now, I am working in London, planting churches here in London, serving as a pastor. So my family, uh, both, yeah, my extended family on both sides of my family, they're all doing well. So thank God for that. All of them are safe. And uh, nowadays, you know, we, we communicate, you know, mm -hmm. through a phone call, through WhatsApp call. Uh, we are thankful for technology that uh, can keep us close, uh, like, like, like even this, uh, even though all of us here are far away. So yeah, but everyone is healthy, and uh, so yeah, thank God for that. Okay, would, would you just, like to you say know, something okay. personal? <laughs> I've been on the spot, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, well, you know, Kenya, Kenya is a beautiful uh, country. I wish that I can visit it one day, sincerely so. Uh, I have uh, many friends in Kenya. And uh, I would just like to wish people in Kenya, you know, really uh, God's blessing. Uh, I pray that uh, this thing will blow over soon. Uh, and uh, and I believe that, you know, uh, peacetime will come back again. Normalcy will resume. So just an encouragement that if you're socially distanced, uh, don't be afraid. You know, if you are, you know, just cry out to God and uh, allow his peace to calm your, your nerves. And uh, we are able to go through this 